stand up together. I might actually turn on the Facebook Live too. Since we got some folks out of town on vacation. Yeah, they did. They missed everything. Oh, they need a baby. No, I don't. All right, take it from the top, Cindy. Take it from the back. Oh my goodness, it's terrible. All right, let's see if my clicker works. There it does. All right, we are going through the Book of Romans. Okay, we're in chapter two. I'm glad a lot of you were here. Wednesday night for chapter one, we were unable to be here. We were at the Ark Encounter for a conference, and Casey led, and I hear it was a good talk and a good time. So, chapter two this week, who would be our leader, our speaker? Has someone not done it? Would do it? Gene, take it. Thank you. There will be tribulation and distress for every soul of man who does evil. Of the Jew first, and also of the Greek. But glory and honor and peace to everyone who does good. To the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For there is no partiality with God. For all have sinned in the eyes of God. And if we don't believe that and acknowledge that, we are fooling ourselves. We're not fooling God. He knows for sure. We have sinned in the eyes of God. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for building this house through the Civil War many moons ago for calling us here. We thank you for our membership of our church family, both those who are able to be here today. We have some vacationers right now, too, loving the fact that October is so beautiful. Be with those that are uh, traveling this weekend and those that are here today and also those that can't be here today because of illness. But bring us all together one like-minded belief that we can worship you. And as we start that today, let us affirm our belief by praying together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right, ladies, what we sing? Good morning. Please join me. Sunshine in my soul.
traveling mercies, we do have some enjoying. You might see there's there's no holder plan here. They gone Tennessee with horses and such. That'll be a really good time. And I believe this is the time Daryl and Pam are going out too. They were going, I think, right now to where they normally go. I think Shenandoah. Yeah, I believe. So prayers for them and our own son. He's in Owensboro for a softball tournament. He'll be back till tomorrow. So October, a great time to travel. I know fall break has happened uh, with school, and they're still off school tomorrow, I think, for Columbus Day. Yeah, one more day in Henry County. So it's that time of year. School's back in, but people are traveling to let them get away. So mercies for them, for sure. Now I bring up to you all the prayer list in the middle of the bulletin, if you have one. If you don't have one, I do see we have at least a few more in the back. Who needs to be brought up for prayer? Alan. That was them there. She's been there with Kenny Stetson, Kenny Doctor, the regular doctor. She had no stones this time, just a few travelers. And she left press the bus on and all that was good. She left up the back as far as the kidneys and that. She's doing good. And then Troy Barnes, her nephew, is having kidney problems now. I've been with me as he's. I'll tell you, if anybody knows about stones, it's your bride, Deborah, so that she's not got a bunch going as good. Hate to hear that about Troy. Sounds like it does run some in the family, for sure. Who else do we need to add today or update today? Cindy. I would like to put Skip Berry on that list. Um, COVID basically destroyed his lungs to the point he needed a lung transplant, and he got that. Monday, and his transplant team is amazed at how well he's done, and he's very vocal in telling them why he's done so well. Oh, so, no. Yeah, yes, he's telling them all about it, but he still needs prayers. He's at Mayo Clinic in uh, Florida, and uh, just, I guess, that he doesn't reject them and continues to do well. Now, is he a berry with an E or a berry with an A? E. Who else today? Miss Linda? I brought my brother David home from the nursing home Saturday, and he was home about 15 minutes and fell. So I had to call the grandchildren in to kind of get him up, and we got him situated. But he looked over at this box, and he said to all of us, you see that box over there? That's my book. I finished it. He said, I'm ready to go home now. So I pray that the, his journey will be peaceful and that um, the good Lord will just honor his wishes. Oh, that's tough. I need to pray. Paula. Instead of a prayer, I had a praise today. Mr. Bill and Dawson. Yay! Yes. 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 All the story of life. It's been a hard 2023 in the Smith home for sure. Praise God they're here. Any others we need to bring up today? Harry, or is there anyone online that has a prayer meeting brought up? Next week, maybe for two weeks, something. 
know Kenzie, uh, she's our volleyball captain this year. Pray for the volleyball team that starts Tuesday, like two days from now. It's always fun. And since we've seen you all here last Sunday, we did have a practice and it was a good time. Our team has fun. And come to Cropper for their fellowship hall behind the church, 7.30 Tuesday. And if you're part of the team, just remember that. Be there and let her know if you're not. Because she has a, a lineup she has to put together. Any other prayer needs today? Trisha. Phil's in a lot of pain. And Phil is uh, involved in every kind of sport that exists on this planet, so he needs his shoulder. I can sleep. Any others today? Let's pray. Lord, we pray for all those mentioned a lot today. Troy Barnes, experiencing stones. Bill Bays, <coughs> shoulder pain, leading to lack of sleep and pain. Skip Berry, good news about uh, lung transplant and who's responsible for most of the healing. Lord, for Vicki Case this week get closer to her surgery. Jessica, who will be having uh, a minor surgery coming up soon, but any surgery is a surgery. For Deborah King, good reports. Uh, very few people struggle with stones as much as Deborah. But pretty good report right now. For Wayne McAllister, tests leading up to a surgery in just under a week and a half. For Tracy Jones, and Cliff Stuckey, as uh, Cliff's had a lot of issues going on, and Tracy being a, a caregiver, that, that can absolutely affect you. Wesley Holder, this week, just as soon as uh, Rache and Patrick are gearing up for worship, he's pulled up sick. Everybody in this room can amen that. You know how it is. For Stephen Thornton's grandpa, Kenzie's fellows, Pepal, who's been put on hospice. For David Ranstall, good things happen and then, by golly, you fall. And he knows who he is, what he believes, where he's going. Lord be with him. For Frankie Stewart, who's had a scary end of the week, but doing well, feeling the love from the church family, still gearing up to play the piano here as soon as she can. For Vonda Stewart, Really tough fall. She also is a caregiver. Help her heal from these ribs and this leg. Pastor Nick Sr. and his family and his church family, thank you for good folks helping raise money like what Brad Fisher just did and also for people gathering to pray at their church and other places to have awareness of the need for prayer for Pastor Nick and his family. Traveling mercies for all of our church members that are enjoying October right now. Whether they're going somewhere not too far away or out of state, we've got some good traveling going on. Be with them. and Thank you, Lord, for giving us technology to put our uh, church service online where people can access it later on. Be with any unspoken prayer needs that are out there today. Be with our uh, ministries of the church, specifically this week, uh, the Awana program. There will be some observation and training happening starting Wednesday. Praise God for that. We can get that going. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. You have an October calendar that came out before and I'm looking at it. There are a few left in the back if you were not able to be here the last week or two to see that. Big week coming up. Mentioned volleyball on Tuesday night. We have a an anniversary this week we'll sing about, but do we have any birthdays that have not been put in the calendar this week? All right. 
Yes, ma'am. That's what I was saying. It's you. She's doing the math. She's doing the math with her fingers like most of us learned here at Henry County. But it is on Wednesday. Am I correct? Yeah. Do you know how many years you and Raymond have been hitched? 47. Just 47? Yeah. Just getting started? Yeah. Okay. Any other anniversaries besides Gene and Raymond? All right, we're going to say happy anniversary, Gene and Raymond. All right? Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, Gene and Raymond. Happy anniversary to you. Many, many more. Just 47. I know some of y'all beat 47 a long time ago. So, a little bit number, right? You're 20 years ahead of us, for sure. All right, things going on this week. This is the Help Center Week. You know, Ron and Brenda are in charge of that ministry. If you ever have any questions about that or needs of the ministry or needs to help, talk to Ron and Brenda about it. It's the first, the second Friday of each month. They gather food from Eminence uh, and bring it down here. And that's a resource that anybody in the area, anybody in Henry County can tap into, not just for Drenham area, but all over the place. Good amount of food and uh, toiletries, too, that they do. This week, uh, Thursday, starts the Walk to Emmaus for men. I know you've heard about the Walk to Emmaus for the women all this summer and fall because Harriet is the lay director, the, the woman who has to coordinate it. But the men's weekend is this week. If any of you men who've not been on it have thought that intrigues me, talk to us about it today. You can still go. It's not too late. Up until the day before. Yeah, up until Wednesday, really. The church does pay for it. Um, we have two women going. Harriet has fees. You know Amanda Workman's going to go. Gene Parsons is going to go too. Yes. So that's really cool. They're going on the women's walk, though, right? Not the yeah, men's walk. Yeah, I told them they can't go on the men's walk. Yes, that's right. <laughs> so that's a, that's a praise God that they're both going and they'll, they'll have somebody they recognize there too, like praying you know, all by myself. If you want to go, let us know. Uh, we'll let you know the logistics. And anybody that's part of the Emmaus community here, and a lot of you are, any questions or anything you want to know about times and dates and activities, ask, okay? Because we've got it. We can let you know there's a lot going on with it without giving any of it away. All right. Uh, looking at what else is going on, Wanda hosted about 10 or 11 people at her house the other night for the book study, River of Earth. If you missed the first meeting, you are not banned from starting the second meeting. I know we already have one student wants to go the next time. Going to meet not this Thursday, but the next one, right? At her house, 6, or a little after. We're reading up to page 98 now. So if you need a copy of that book, let us know. We'll get one in Newcastle this week. It's a very good time. And Mike and Wanda were great hosts with way more food than we needed. And it was great. And we took some home with us. And we've been enjoying it. So, <laughs> Stephanie, uh, what do we need to know about the trail retreat? Because it's almost here. I know you won't be here for the first day, but Pat and the girls are... Supposed to take over the table. We're still, still taking donations. I did take a few bags out of the box today to try to make more room. But 1,500 kids. So we will need a lot of candy if possible. And then waiting on the... Uh, Book marks are supposed to arrive Tuesday. So we have 1,500 bookmarks ordered. Like Need more candy. Yeah, I've got the bowls and table and table balls, so just candy. So you have the setup. Okay. And you all remember, regardless of what your feelings are about Halloween or what happens with Halloween, we're sending out scripture, okay, from the Bible to kids who may or may not see that anywhere else. So I'm all in favor of that. And they'll have a little bit of candy, too, nothing wrong with that. So, any questions about it, ask Stephanie. And I, Pat and Terry are not here today, but she is a contact you can talk to, too. She will actually be there for it. Uh, looking ahead at what we have, we had choir today. We'll have choir in two weeks, and the choir will be singing in two weeks. Come be part of that if you've not joined that yet. Upcoming board meeting, November 5th. They'll be here before we know it. So, the week after uh, Halloween, we will have a board meeting. Any other announcements anyone need to make? Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes, Jane. Um, I know what you're talking about. I plan to have sh the shirt order done next Sunday, so make sure you get your 
money to barb and we'll lay them out in the back like we did before um, with your names on them. So. I can't wait to see that. So we'll have some what sweatshirts? Sweatshirts, crew neck sweatshirts, hoodies, and t shirts. It's cool. I love it. We had 52 again this time. Wow. That's something. So you've had to make over 100 shirts now. Yeah. And plus volleyball shirts too. Yeah. So we had 14 of
Now we got one little child. We got some babies with us. Some of our children are out traveling right now. But anyway, this is a week, like we know. Israel is in the forefront of the news. You turn on any news app. I checked CNN, Fox News, and BBC. The top stories are all Israel. So, Miss Linda. For those of you, I'm sure you know that for over 20 years I was with Jews for Jesus. For three years I was with Chosen People's Ministry. And over the years I've developed a lot of friends in Israel and often when I would go I would be able to see them as they uh, serve the Lord uh, in that area. Last night, for those of you that met Ephraim Goldstein when he was here, he and his wife had come in for the holidays. He tries to come back from Israel during the holidays so he can spend it with his son, Daniel, and his wife in Pennsylvania. So they were here when it happened. And so he cannot get back to Israel uh, as of yet because uh, they're not flying in to Tel Aviv for obvious reasons. But the report is this. He has a church up in the northern part of uh, Israel, and they did experience some rockets this morning from Hezbollah, from uh, Lebanon. Uh, the greatest, uh, I guess, carnage is the only way I can put it, happened in the southern part of Israel. There's over 200 people taken hostage, mostly children, women, and elderly. The men have been killed, most of them. Um, as it stands right now, the body count is somewhere up to around 700 on the Israeli side, 300 on the Palestinian side. Uh, many are injured, many in the hospital. Ephraim said that he was there and served in the IDF when the Yom Kippur War took place 50 years ago. Now, if you are a Bible scholar and you love numbers, remember the number 50. What is the number 50? How is it significant? Well, to God, it's very significant. It is a jubilee year. And so it was exactly 50 years on Saturday when the Yom Kippur War was fought and they regained Jerusalem. This is not an accident. The devil knows exactly what he's doing. Those of you that have studied the book of Revelation, you know that we are now in the last days. And it's very dark over there right now in Israel and for various reasons, but for the most part, because many do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. And so my prayer today for Israel is this, that he would remove the scales from the Jewish people's eyes and that they would look up and see their Messiah, Yeshua. And I believe the scriptures, and I believe that's exactly what's going to happen. So I look with anticipation to what's coming. I look to the anticipation that the Lord is coming back very soon. And I can't wait. The Jewish people have been through a lot from the very beginning. It goes all the way back to Abraham. When Abraham had a child out of wedlock with Haggai and Ishmael was born, from there the Arab nation was born. He had a child with Sarah, his name was Isaac, and there the Jewish nation was born. And they've been at odds ever since. And that was quite a quarrel they had. And Ishmael was sent to the desert to live. And that's where the Arab nations have lived all of their lives, in the desert. But remember this, they're all God's children. Even the Arabs, even though 
The evil one is using them. They're all God's children. And many do not know who Yeshua, their Messiah, is. But their cousins, Arabs and Jews are cousins. Think about it. They all come from Abraham. And it was a song that I was taught as a little girl. And it was Father Abraham had many sons. And many sons had Father Abraham. And I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. There was a verse that came to mind this morning when I arose. And it was Second Chronicles. And uh, it says, If my people who are called by my name, are you called by God's name? If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you give him your life, you are called by name. Humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. And I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Is it going to happen here in America? Are we going to be like the, the Jewish people that are suffering right now? It's possible. Do we need our land healed? Oh, do we? And so I'm asking you, if you wouldn't mind, and if you wouldn't mind, Pastor, those of you that are able, I want us to humble ourselves. I want us to come forward, and I'm going to lead you in prayer. And we're going to pray for the nation of Israel, but we're going to pray for our nation. That not only would we support Israel, but the scales would be removed from many people's eyes here in America. And that we would turn back to God, and we would have a revival just like they had at Cain Ridge. Many, many years ago, I grew up in Paris, Kentucky. And that's all that we ever heard in church was how the great revival came to Cain Ridge. When I joined this church, when Steve and I joined this church, my prayer has been every day that God would send revival to this church. I believe he can. I believe he will if we ask him. I believe if we humble ourselves and pray, it will happen. I believe it. And I want to be a part of that latter rain. Do you? Do you want to be a part of what's coming? Do you want to be filled with his spirit just like they were on the day of Pentecost? And when you walk down the street, they don't see darkness. They see light. Just coming, beaming from you because you have the Holy Spirit. You've got something special. So I'm going to ask you if you would come forward. <coughs> Heavenly Father, you are the master of this universe. You made all peoples. Red, yellow, black, and white. It doesn't make any difference, Lord. You loved us all. You gave your life for all of us. Yes, Lord, you were a Jew. And you came to your people and they rejected you. But, oh, Lord, I'm so thankful that you didn't exclude the Gentiles and that you gave us your salvation message so that we could give it back to the Jewish people. So, Father, I pray that you would protect Linda and Ron Newman in Jerusalem, that you would protect Ephraim and Jeannie's church up in the northern part of Israel, that you would be with each of those that have been taken hostage, that, Father, in that group, someone would know you as their personal Savior and would be able to calm their fears and share the gospel with them. Father, I pray for the leader, Netanyahu, that he makes wise decisions and that you give him that wisdom. Father, I pray for our community and our country, America. 
Father, do not let us go the way we have been going, turning our backs on you. Father, forgive us of our transgressions. Forgive us of our sins. Father, forgive us that we haven't been faithful to you. We haven't given you everything. So, Father, we repent now on the most holy day of the year, Yom Kippur, where we're to give repentance to you. We ask that you forgive us. Father, place in us a spirit that is on fire for you. That we are so on fire that we will give the gospel to every person we meet. And Father, build this church in the name of Jesus as a body of believers who love you. Father, we ask this in your most holy name. And Father, you said in the scriptures, may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. And may the Lord lift up his face upon us and give us your peace. For it is in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah, the Prince of Peace, that peace can come. Amen. Amen. It's a ram's horn. And over in Israel, they blow this frequently, especially during the Feast of uh, Trumpets. But you know, I can't blow it, and neither could Casey and neither could the pastor this morning, so we won't blow it. <laughs> but you can. You can try. But you know, the shofar is important. And it's important because back in the Old Testament, they would blow that shofar when there was danger. They would warn the people that the enemies were coming. They would blow it in praise to God when a new king was anointed. They would blow that trumpet every year at Feast of Trumpets and Feast of Tabernacles. And that's the, the holiday that they just celebrated, and that's why Ephraim came back from Israel to be with his family. And, the, and then they have a, a, a one day where they fast, and that's called Yom Kippur, and that's the most holy day of all. During Feast of Tr Trumpets, they blow it over a hundred times. And then, during Yom Kippur, they blow it four times, and each time they blow it, it has a special meaning. And uh, they're lifting up their praises to the Father through the shofar. And uh, some are silver, some are gold, some are just natural, like the, the horn of a, uh, this is the funniest story. When I moved to Lincoln County at one time, a man came up to the gas station and he had these two big horns on his truck, pickup truck. And I thought that was the funniest thing I'd ever seen. But that would have made a wonderful shofar. I mean, I really believe you got a sound out of that. But this one's a small one. And I think that's why it's so hard to blow, is some of the larger ones are a lot easier to blow. Do you know what this one is? Do you have any idea? Can you think what this one is? What do you think it is? Mm -hmm. yeah. It could be a prayer shawl. Mm -hmm. see, it could be a prayer shawl for 
a home. Why? Because it's pink. And so I got this one over in Israel. And uh, you know in the Old Testament where it said go into your prayer closet and have prayer? Well, they didn't have closets in the Old Testament. But they'd go into their prayer shop <laughs> and they'd get along with God. Peek a -boo. <laughs> And so that's what they meant in the Old Testament when they said to go into your closet and get along with God. So you see the Jewish people as they traveled through the desert and wilderness, in the wilderness for 40 years, they didn't have a house, but they had their prayer shawl. And they would put the prayer shawl over their heads. And if you've ever seen pictures of them at the Western Wall, the Hasidic Jews, they would pull the prayer shawl over their head. That's what they're doing. They're going into their tabernacle, their prayer shawl. And on the edge of this right here, it has a lot of embroidery. But it says Jehovah God is one. Now this one is a little unique because it has a crown like it was meant for a king. And down here it has four tassels, one on each corner. Just like God told them to make it in the, in the Old Testament in Deuteronomy. They tied their prayer shawl in knots. And if I were to tie this in seven knots, I would be saying Jehovah God. You see, their language is built on the number system. So in each of these little seat seats, they call them, there's a hidden message. And you know in Revelation, and ladies in my Sunday school class, you're going to know this. What is Jesus going to wear when he comes back in chapter 19? Come on, ladies. What's he going to put on? It's going to hit him out of his thigh. He's going to wear his prayer shawl, right. And those little seat seats, those little tassels are going to strike him right about his thigh. And what's it going to say, anybody? Anybody know? This is going to be tied in such a way it says, King of kings and Lord of lords. Okay? The first time I read Revelation, I thought he had a t-shirt on, maybe. He was going to come back and, you know, you were going to see it printed, King of kings and Lord of lords. I had no idea that there was hidden messages in this prayer shop. There are 613 little fringes. Now, I've never sat down and counted them, but that's what they tell me. And that stands for the 613 laws that the Jewish people have. So a prayer shop is very important to a Jewish person. It goes with them in death. It's wrapped around a man's head when, when they die. And when Jesus died, this was wrapped around his head. And when Peter and John ran into that tomb, they saw the napkin over there folded. Well, King James, the men of King James Day didn't know what to call this tally in Hebrew. So they called it a napkin. But it's really the prayer shawl of Jesus. And when they saw it folded over there all by itself, and Jesus gone, they knew Jesus was alive because no rabbi would ever have not folded this in such a way. Because you see, it's the rabbis who make the tallies, the prayer shawls. So he folded it so that Peter and John would know. I folded my tally. I'm alive. So that's the story of the tally and the shofar. Good job with your little model too. How about that? Yeah. It's fun to play dress up. This is 
This is real stuff you got to think about, folks, that when you hear about Israel in the news, it's not just distant overseas stuff. It's our people, okay? This is our heritage. Jesus came to fulfill the law, not to abolish the law. He came as a completed Jew. And for folks over there to be struggling and suffering, that's our heritage. We're going to go into our Holy Communion time now. And as we have a song, be in preparation for receiving the elements. So, ladies.
gathered in the upper room for the last supper. Jesus took the bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples. He said, This represents my body that will be broken for you. Take and eat. And after they were through eating, Jesus took the cup and gave it to his disciples. So this represents the new covenant. Do this or remember it's with me. Father, as we always do, we thank you for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you will do. In your name we pray. <laughs> Stand for the doxology. Gentiles, 
it's going to refer to circumcision. But I'm going to read through it twice. And the second time I read it, I'm going to substitute the word Christian in here. So we can hear it echo into our lives. And I'm going to substitute the word non-believer. So we can hear that. And I'm going to substitute the word baptism. So we can hear that. Because sometimes you hear circumcision, you heard Jew and Gentile. It might not resonate to you the same way. Well, let's go into it. It says from starting in verse 17. And again, I've been reading from the New American Standard Bible. Strangely enough, where we were all week, those cats up at the ark, a lot of them were using that. A lot of them referred to Romans 1, the day that we studied it on Wednesday night. You can't make this stuff up. God gets his word out, and oftentimes he gives the same word to people worldwide. We need to hear Romans 1. Today, let's hear Romans 2. It says, but if you bear the name Jew and rely upon the law and boast in God and know his will and improve the things that are essential, being instructed out of the law, and are confident that you yourself are a guide to the blind, a light to those who are in darkness, a corrector of the foolish, a teacher of the immature, having in the law the embodiment of knowledge and of the truth, you, therefore, who teach another, do you not teach yourself? Now pause there. Paul, who's written this letter to the, the Romans, he's saying, you say you follow the law. You teach people <coughs> about following the law. But do you follow the law? Ouch. Yeah, you can say it all you want. You can even teach it. Does that mean you're following it? Hopefully. Does it always mean that? No. Pick it back up. It says, you who preach that one shall not steal, do you steal? You who say that one should not commit adultery. Do you commit adultery? You who abhor idols. You, do you rob temples? You who boast in the law. Through your breaking law do you dishonor God. For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles. <laughs> because of you. Just as it is written. God is saying through the Apostle Paul right here that when we preach the law and teach people and say don't do this and don't do that but we do it. We're teaching non-believers <laughs> wrong about God. In fact it says here we're blaspheming his name amongst the Gentiles. I don't want to be told I'm blaspheming God's name. That sounds really serious because it is. If we talk about, yeah, don't steal. Don't run around with somebody else's old lady. Don't break into the church and pull stuff out of it, but yet we do it. We're blaspheming God's name. He goes on to say, for indeed, circumcision, you know how important that was to the Jews. Circumcision is of value if you practice the law, but if you are a transgressor of the law, your circumcision has become uncircumcision. Does it matter as a Jew that you've been circumcised if you don't act like you're supposed to? It kind of says, well, you haven't really even been circumcised if you are not acting like it. So if the uncircumcised man keeps the requirements of the law, will not his uncircumcision be regarded as circumcision? Now this, this reminds me about how some of us will say, oh, he was a good old guy. He was, he's such a good guy. And you know you probably have friends and family members or even been to a funeral of someone that you know deep down inside was a much nicer, maybe even better overall person than you were. But they don't know Jesus, right? But you know, man, he's a good guy. He's just as good a guy as there ever was. But he didn't know Jesus. 
So this is saying, Paul's written down, God has given it to him. Is that man more holy than you who say you're holy, who says the right things, they come into church, but they're not acting like it. Paul's writing here, what if God were to say, you know that guy who's a good old guy? Maybe he's more Christian than you are. I shudder at the thought because you know that good old guy doesn't say it. It doesn't. But what I'm hearing of that is that that good old guy is probably better off in God's eyes than you or I who say we believe in Jesus but don't remind God of Jesus at all by our actions, by our attitudes, by our words. And he who is physically circumcised. Now look at that, that or un uncircumcised. Someone who has not. And you know what circumcision is. We still use the practice here, but back then it was very important ceremonially and religiously. For so who is uncircumcised, if he keeps the law, will he not judge you who though having the letter of the law and the circumcision are a transgressor of the law. So Let's say you've been a circumcised Jew. You did all the right things. You're in the synagogue. You might even have the tallit. But you're not following it. You don't mean it. What does God think of that? Would God rather you have the ceremonial trappings of being a Jew, or in our case a Christian? You got an ichthus fish on the back of your car, you order 17 shirts from Jane that say, I am the church, or we are the church. You got bracelets that have a cross on them. But you don't look, look act, or smell anything like Jesus. <laughs> What's God going to do with that? Whew. And it's not up to us to judge, is it? Not any one of us. Not me, not you, not anybody. It's up to him. Paul is saying here, you know Paul's hardcore. Saying, what's God going to do about that? Bottom of the screen. For he is not a Jew who is one outwardly, nor is circumcision that which is outward in the flesh. And I would sneak the word only in there. If your circumcision happened, you are a Jew. You've done the right things to be a Jew, but it's only on the outside. God is saying, oh, I don't really think you're a Jew. You might look like one, but you show sure ain't one. The last words of this chapter say, but he is a Jew who is one in And circumcision is that which is of the heart. By the Spirit. Not by the letter. And His praise is not from men. But from God. And you know where it says there. By the letter. Following the law by the letter. You know in church not just driven any church that calls itself a church. A lot of our reputation, any reputation of a church, is by behavior. <laughs> how you act. Some of it's based on how much liquor you don't drink or do drink. Some of it's based on, in some churches, how long your skirt is or your hair. Some of it's based on what you smoke in your mouth or not. Some of it's based on the words that might sneak their way out of your mouth as if you were in the Navy, which some of us in this room were. You know what I'm talking about. It's behavior. You might have the best, most pristine, crystal clear behavior of anybody. But does that mean you're saved? I told you I'm going to change up some of the words. I am not changing scripture and I would dare not do it because you know it says in the book, don't touch it. But let's just substitute for a minute so you can hear it. But he is a Christian who is one inwardly. Think about that. 
Most of us that go to a church would call ourselves a Christian. Okay? Yeah. It's saying here, he who is a Christian is one inwardly. I told you it's substitute circumcision now. And baptism is that which is of the heart by the spirit, not by the letter. I've told you many times. We go down to Earl Jr.'s Creek Crossing. It is not magic water. You know that. A lot of you have been in that creek with me. It's kind of dirty. We had to walk through a bunch of leaves when Gene's granddaughter Savannah went there a couple weeks, a few weeks ago. We were talking yesterday at a table at our Emmaus uh, meeting about the fact that one of the pictures shows Casey during the baptism doing this because there was a decent sized fish that came up. You know, we're surrounded by minnows. And that day with Savannah, it was so cool because we had minnows swirling around us. It reminded me of the, the beginning of the show, The Chosen, that has those fish going, and you have some going the other way because, you know, they're, they're not going upstream with everybody else. They're going the opposite direction. But those cute little minnows were not always there. And Casey, there's a picture of it going back. I don't know what kind of fish it was. We've seen a bunch of gar down there before during baptisms, and they're not the happiest looking fish. I've also seen water snakes in there, just saying, but you know, I thank God will protect us from those snakes during the baptism. That water's not it. I'll read that part again. And baptism is that which is of the heart by the Spirit. Not by the letter. The fact that you don't chew the back up does not get you in the head. The fact that you had never had liquor cross your lips does not get you in heaven. The fact that you've only been married one time does not get you in heaven. Sorry, but actually not sorry, because we need to know the truth. And praise, this is the biggest part, you know it is. Praise is not from men, but from God. Are you looking for your praise to come from people of this world? Your friends, your running buddies, your family, your church mates? Or are you looking for your praise to be from the one? The one. Now I want to read one little part of it again and substitute. Verse 24, I'll go back just a touch here. The bottom of the screen. For the name of God is blasphemed among non-believers because of you. I know it says Gentiles back then. That was a non-believer. That was someone that was not a Jew. Do you want God's name to be blasphemed because of your behavior, my behavior, amongst people that don't believe in the gospel? Think about it. Have you been burned by church before? Do you know someone in your family or your friends or your workmates that have been burned by church. Yeah, that's a real thing. It's saying right there in the book of Romans, the name of God is blaspheming among non-believers because of you. I shudder at the thought of that. I want our church to be one of inward transformation. A true change of heart being evident. Not just outward appearances. We can look as churchy as we want. And I love it. I can't wait to have my hoodie next week. I really can't. I'm looking forward to it. Because I love that stuff. But that doesn't make me a Christian, does it? Not a bit. Not just wearing a church shirt or having a fish on the back of your car, but that you remind people of Jesus when they're in life with you. Now that's quite a mantle to wear. Do you remind people of Jesus when you're in life with them? Here's a tough phrase. I came up with this earlier. I was taking some notes. Not just that you can list the fruit of the Spirit, but that you exude the fruit of the Spirit. Some of the greatest quoters of the Bible that I've ever met have been behind bars in prison. They had the whole thing memorized. But you can tell by talking to them for five seconds. They don't have one bit of it imprinted on their heart. It's not transformative. 
You can say all you want, but unless it's evident, it doesn't amount to the hill of beans. In fact, you are blaspheming the name of God. So I'm going to ask you, as we get ready for our hymn of invitation, who are you in Christ? Is he just something you post on social media? I've said this many times from this pulpit. It's been a while since I have. But when I see someone that wouldn't be caught dead in a church posting scriptures or a picture of Jesus, and I know they never going to be in church, that breaks my heart. Is that all he is to you? A picture on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter? That's all Jesus is to you is a picture? How about if he's the Lord of your daily life? Everything you do, everything you are, every ounce of your being is I'm waiting for the day when he pulls those dead in Christ into the air and then the rest of us that believe in him and his heart, we go next. And he takes us. Miss Linda said earlier, don't you know we're in the last day? I doubt many of you in this room disagree with that. You've seen the world. We're there. He's coming. Are you ready? Do you desire to live with him for all eternity? I pray that you do. So we have our hymn of invitation today. We're going to have when the roll is called up yonder. It says right after that, I'll be there. Do you plan to be there? Let's stand and sing together with the ladies. And this is the time that if you have a decision you need to make, well, during that song, do it. Say, yeah, I'm ready. I haven't made my claim for Jesus. I need to do it. I want to join the church. I want to go be baptized. I want to rededicate. This is the time. Let's sing together. <laughs>
around the outside of the pews. I know we're a little bit tight today to do that, but you can stretch and it'll be good for your muscles. <laughs> I'll just say that. Thank you. 